So welcome back to Nick and Michael podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, fortunately for you, this is the first um, episode. Mm-hmm. So we're going to talk about our first impression in Greece, how our first year was like. And uh, yeah, let us know if you have any questions. So um, Nick, how was your first year, let's say, your first impression? Well, actually, the first time I came to Thessaloniki, yeah. I hated it. I came with my school, because in Cyprus we have school field trips to Greece, like once uh, towards the end of high school. And they brought us here, and I hated it. I don't know, I really didn't like it, because, you know, I can't even really give you a reason as to why I didn't like it. But when I applied for it and I came here, I don't know, I fell in love instantly. And it was more like a, it felt more like home. And I was a bit worried that I would be quite homesick. Mm. And I didn't want to leave Cyprus when I was leaving, but it felt more like a advanced version of home. There was mm. more opportunities, there was more life, there was better food, much cheaper. Yeah, much cheaper, Much right. cheaper too. Actually, if you compare it to Vietnam then, it's actually more expensive, but I think compared to European standards, it's, uh, yeah. it's better for sure. Yeah, you know, like when I first came here, mm-hmm. because um, of the situation back then, when I left Vietnam, it was like the top, the peak of COVID. It was yes. horrible. Yeah. Like we would have had like lockdowns and the only reason you could go out mm-hmm. is to pick up, let's say, food or like some delivery, like essentials. Yeah, yeah. That's the only reason that you can get out of your house. And uh, yeah, it was horrible. Like I'm, I was so scared that I couldn't, I wasn't gonna be let go like by the government or whatever forces. Yeah. In Cyprus, the sun is way worse, way worse. And it's, it's added because you get a lot of dust coming in from the Middle East. And with that dust, and there's also a lot of humidity because mm. it's an island, it just adds to this sticky heat that eventually just makes you feel like you can't do anything throughout the day. The difference with the sun here is that there isn't a lot of humidity. Mm, yeah, that's true. So it's more just pure sunlight. Yeah. And it's quite nice. Actually, it's the same with the uh, Vietnam. Like in Vietnam, your skin in the summer is always sticky, like not with a sweat. It's the yeah. like the humidity in the air, yeah. and also the worst thing about it is we have so much traffic and vehicles on the road. Yes. It makes the road like 40, 50 degree easily, yeah. which is a horrible, horrible experience if you are like a 12 and you are riding your bicycle on the road. It's it's just deadly, I would say. There are much bigger differences, at least with you regarding your first impressions when you first came to Greece, because, I mean, Vietnam to Europe. Yeah. Me, I was already technically in yeah. Europe. Yeah, I think. So it's not that big of a difference. But we will get onto this later as to the mentality of perhaps the, like, Cypriots growing up in Cyprus, the mentality being vastly different, even though ethnically a lot of them are Greek. Mm. But it's much more different. But for you, it was a much bigger difference. Uh, yeah. Culture shock, kind of. No, it's not a culture shock. It's just Listen. something nice. I mean, the sun. It's a nice thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's yeah. shocking a bit, but it's still nice. Mm-hmm. In your first year, was there any kind of, let's say, super struggle that you had in terms of daily-wise? Or something that, in the first few days, that really struggled, struggled you? I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to speak Greek that fluently, Mm. even though I grew up in Cyprus where they speak Greek, but it's not the same because the Cypriot dialect is completely different from normal Greek, let's say. Mm. So it was, you know, I was a bit scared to use that dialect as opposed to learning better Greek but I mean like when you actually speak it do you feel like you're different or something like did it feel when I speak what like Greek let's say Greek Greek yeah no I I actually feel much better now because I've tried to 
get in touch with the communities here, like try to speak mm. like how they speak. And I found that it's just much easier for me to speak like that. Yeah. Rather than trying to speak Cypriot Greek. Yeah, actually, that's good. Yeah, it's much easier. Well done. <laughs> so. What about you, actually, the difference in, I mean, what did you struggle with? Because I, you must have struggled with the language to some level. Yeah, I mean, in terms of language, to be honest, I would say that I did not struggle that much. Mm. I mean, like, the way you struggle with the way I struggle is completely different. Because for me, when they see me, they would be talking to me in English, like, immediately. Like, yeah. They wouldn't even try to, to be like, Kalimera, blah, 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 you know, like, yeah. they'll be like, oh, good morning, how are you? How can mm -hmm. I help you? Something like that. So for me, it's quite friendly and it's quite easy to, let's say, ease into the life of mm -hmm. a student here. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the thing I was struggling with is actually the bureaucracy here. You know what happened to me in the first year? Mm. Like, for example, uh, my house, like my apartment, was easy thing because uh, my mom found it before I came here, so that part was easy. But for me to get internet into the house, you don't know how long it took. Like yeah, I remember you trying yeah. to get internet in the house yeah, it looked, and it took going so there. It took so long, and like, do you know why? The reason is, in in Greece, in order to have internet in your house, okay, like a a line mm -hmm. into your house, you have to have a thing called. Afimi, which is basically yes. a tax number. And in, in order to get a tax number, you have to prove, first of all, that you are here legally. And then you have to support, uh, sorry, um, have a bank account first. Yeah. To have a bank account, you need to wait for about a week for them to verify that you're a student here and uh, that's you have bit, money here. That's a bit funny because I didn't need a bank, bank account. I mean, you're I European. It. I needed a bank account. Oh, I, that's I, I needed a bank account to yeah. have the Afimi. Mm. Yeah, so that took a bit of time. So it's like a week, a week after a week, weeks after week. Every week I get one thing done and like, I think the school year started uh, from October. I was here from September and I didn't have internet until, let's say, December or something. Like, I remember I, I paid my first bill after the new year. Oh yeah, you did, I remember. Yeah, I paid my fir first bill after the new year. So, just just keep in mind that it is going to take time. And like, I would say that it's no one's fault. I mean, like, it's a thing that has been happening here for for a long time. And uh, you're not the exception. So, just be aware that it's going to take your time. Although if you did decide to actually come here, the offices, the international office tries to really help you. Yeah, like actually, they, they, they are very helpful now. Yeah, they Even are then, quite I mean, helpful. Yeah, they're very helpful. Uh, I think I, I owe it to the lady and the gentleman there. They always help me with everything I needed. Mostly, yes. if, I, if I open my mouth to ask, they're going to help me. Like, for example, oh, uh, I did my brace here. Yes, you Yeah, did. like, uh, what I did was I went to the, the office <clears> and I asked the lady, her name is Liana, uh, she was very nice about it. She introduced me to uh, her cousin, and uh, yeah, like I had my brace done and everything. Of course, I had to pay for it. Uh, it's not free here, but I wasn't expecting it. But I mean, like even the personal thing that you want to, you you could ask them, which is really nice, and they're very genuine about it. They're not like GRG or anything, which is a very good thing, I would say. This is another impression that I had with Greece when I first came here and started living here. I noticed that the people were a lot more open to speak about more genuine things. Mm. And it, it really makes you feel like, a f like you're welcomed to some level, I guess. Mm. It's not for everyone. It depends also how much work you're willing to put into interacting with Greek people. Yeah. But, yeah, they are the most open people I've been around. The mm. most, at least. Cypriots don't, like, when I was living in Cyprus, I didn't feel this kind of openness with people. They were more closed off than Greek people, at least. Mm. Yeah, I get what you Although mean. Although you did say before that she recommended, like, a cousin 
Yeah. yeah, this is a very normal thing. Oh, I will recommend, oh, I have a cousin, I have a brother, I have a yeah. uncle who does this. Yeah, he can take care of you, he, she can take care of you. This yeah, is I mean, a very like, common thing. For, for me, it's a, it's a very nice thing because uh, mm. it's like they're opening to me, like they're mm, introducing their family, like in a way, like yeah. they're not very shy about it. Like, even though we're in medical school, she could have uh, referred it to, to, like, she'd just go to dental school and find one, something like that. They, yeah. She could have done it, but yeah. she sent me directly to the one that she knows that is experienced and has been doing it for a long time, something like that. So I, I think it was very nice of her, to be honest. Yes. Yeah. Talking so. about those things, mm -hmm. there's one, another thing I really like about Greece is the student privileges. Yes, Students are yes, you very, are right. very prioritized here and they are so privileged. You know, before I came here, my mom told me that here people try not to get out of school. People try to stay in university <laughs> so they can earn their rights yeah. to certain things that once you are uh, regarded as adults, you're yeah. not getting those anymore. I would say, for example, the first, first thing that came into my mind is, uh, let's say, the bus ticket discount. Like, for me, uh, if I go to other places, I'll get like 25% discount. If I go back to Thessaloniki, I'll get 50% discount. Yeah, you get, and this is applicable. If, let's say you're in Athens. Yeah. Yeah, you can get a 50% discount. Normally, the price is around like 30... 60. 60, 60 really? Yeah, it is 60. When? 60 per, for one way. I've taken buses that are like 30 going there. Yeah, that's what, that's because you took uh, the discount. No, I think before with the with without the discount it was like forty something like that, mm. and with the discount it was like twenty. Really? Yeah. For me, it's like thirty with the discount. Well, that's still very cheap because I was speaking to a few of the first-year students. Just some context: uh, we're recording this at the beginning of the our third year. Yeah. Uh, so I'm making it clear that we've been the New Year's have joined. Yeah. So I've spoken to a few of them, especially a few from England, mm. and they were telling me that, let's say, going from, I believe, Manchester to London was like 150 pounds, somewhere oh, around the... there. Yeah. Although, I uh, don't quote me on this, this isn't specific, mm. I might be mistaken. But yeah, you are right, there are many student privileges, there's also discounts on food yeah uh, actually discounts on uh, in our school there's a thing called Lesky, which is basically the canteen S school cafeteria yeah. yeah you know like for the first two years we it was basically free yeah it was basically <laughs> free like we were yeah. eating for free only until the war happened what do you mean by the war the uh, Ukraine the, war yeah like until that happened the food price uh, came up came up and uh, they closed up for a bit and then after that they uh, restricted the access to to Lesky. Yeah. Yeah. So after that, we had to pay. Like yeah, I mean, I us, we had to pay. For people who are Greek, they still eat uh, for free if for free. their if their parents uh, pay tax. Like Stella told me. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. This but even thing. if I had to pay, I only had to pay sixty-one euro per month. Sixty-one euro per month. Which is like nothing for food. Like breakfast, lunch, dinner included for three meals a day. So that's less than a euro per meal. Yeah, and the portion is quite generous, I would say. And actually, I mean, you could even go back for seconds if you really want. You yeah, can I mean, try. I mean, I, I wouldn't do that because the portion is already too big for me. Like, I'm, I'm, I don't even eat that much. But yeah, people do that. Mm -hmm. So I would say that, uh, back to the point, the, there are a lot of student privileges that we yeah. will, will be covering along the way. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's another big advantage of uh, being here. Well, I mean, we're not doing this for like kind of promotion of Greece, but this is a fact that you, you should keep in mind. We do really find this as an opportunity to document what we're doing, because we know that, well, one, someone else is going to do this eventually. <laughs> Yeah. But we want to make this a genuine thing where we show other people who are, who potentially want to become medical students as well, mm. that Greece is open. Greece for the first time is open for you. And because our school started it in Thessaloniki, then the next year Athens made their own. Mm. And the year after that, Larissa made their own. No, not Larissa, Crete. It wasn't. 
Crete, yeah. yes, Crete, sorry, my bad. Larissa will make the round, though. Really? Yeah, they will, they confirmed that. So, our school was the first one to start all of this, and now, yeah, Greece is open to the world, basically. 